Hello. In this video, we're going to go over the subduction activity, and you'll be answering these questions as we move along. Um, near the end of this activity, you are going to have to draw a picture of subduction and label these parts. And then there'll be one final question, which we will hopefully answer as we move along. So without further ado, let's get started on this and hopefully finish it within uh, about five to six to seven minutes. The first thing we're going to do is look at a map of Earth's crust. And in this map, there are isobars. And an isobar is just a line that connects areas of equal depth. And so we have uh, depth maps showing the relative uh, thickness of continental crust and oceanic crust. And you can see that uh, continental crust is hopefully much, much thicker than oceanic crust. So we have circle the best answer, which crust is thicker. So the continental crust, you can tell, is much thicker. It has all the higher iso isobars on it. And if you look at the ocean crust, and so here again we have South America, North America, Greenland, Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, Antarctica, and this is the oceans. We have our Pacific Ocean, our Atlantic Ocean, our Indian Ocean. And wherever we have an ocean, the depth of the crust is much thinner. It's less than um, one to two kilometers thick and this is measured in kilometers so the oceanic crust is much thinner than the continental crust which is much thicker so they want us to look at uh, the coast of california so the coast of california is right here and off the coast of california how thick is it and you can see these isobars we have one that is 10 we have one that is 20 and we have one that is 30 so right off the coast of California you can see that it is 30 kilometers in thickness so what is the depth of the Pacific Ocean well we do not have isobars between 0 and 10 so we know that it is 10 here and 0 here so it's probably between 0 and 10 kilometers but because there's no isobars in between, we just have 0 and 10. Now we're going to look at a subduction zone. So the next question is list the two components of a lithospheric plate. So let's look at a continental plate. And the two parts are we have the crust and we have the mantle. So the two parts are crust and mantle. And this makes up the lithosphere. And on an oceanic plate, we have the same thing. We have our crust and we have our lithosphere. And the lithosphere is the upper part of the mantle. All right, and that's the part that is actually pulling the plate along. So the lithosphere is pulling this plate along and causing it to be subducted down. All right, and on top of that, that uh, mantle we have, we can either have oceanic crust, which is crust that has ocean on top, or continental. Um, which one is denser? Well, the denser one is going to be the one that is always pushed down. And oceanic crust is more dense, which means it just is more compact, so it always gets pushed under. And the continental is less compact, so it tends to rise up and float on top. And it very rarely gets subducted. Well, what does subduction mean? So if we actually go to our dictionary, we have a definition of subduction. Subduction is the sideways and downward movement of the edge of a plate of the Earth's crust into the mantle beneath another plate. So you may want to pause this video so you can write that down. It is the sideways and downward movement of the edge of a plate of the Earth's crust into the mantle beneath another plate. So again, we have a downward movement of one plate below another one. 
in sideways because it is moving this way and then it moves down, so sideways and downward. What happens when a plate is subducted? Well, you can see right here what happens. As the plate is subducted down into this mantle, the temperature of the earth heats up, and as it heats up, along with the friction of it rubbing down, it is going to melt. And as it starts to melt, the magma will rise up, and it will melt through the plate above it, and it will form volcanic. So you have a line of volcanoes forming here. This also brings up the last question on your subduction activity. So if you flip down to question 13, Question 13 asks, do earthquakes happen at subduction zones? Explain why. And the answer is, yes, earthquakes happen. Whenever you have two plates rubbing past each other, you're going to get sticking of rock. And when the rock sticks, like it did just right there, then it um, pressure builds up, and eventually the mantle which keeps moving is going to break that uh, belt up pressure and you will get earthquakes. Uh, so earthquakes always happen at um, a plate boundary because the plates are always moving past each other and sticking and then breaking free. Moving on, list three geological features that happen. Okay, so what we have is we have our surface features and you can see that three features are, we have of course our volcanoes, you also get an accretionary zone, and that's where, as this plate is being pulled under, some of it is scraped off, and so you'll have the scrapings or the remnants of this plate as it's being pulled under. So you're in an accretion zone where new rock is being scraped off, or rock is being scraped off, not new. And you also get a trench, and a trench is just as this is being pulled down, it's forming a deep. Um, trench area. Okay, next, which plate is being disappearing? And you can answer that. We have our continental plate which is not disappearing and our oceanic plate which is slowly being pulled down. So let's move to another uh, animation. Let's see what would happen um, as plates move along and speed up time. So we have our mid-ocean ridge here and we have our subduction zone here. And if we actually play this, you can see that as the mid-ocean ridge keeps pushing out, it, uh, the oceanic plate is slowly disappearing until eventually the continental plate will just engulf everything. So the processes that are involved in that are, again, below we have Bangla rising at spreading zones and it's pulling plates along and then it's disappearing at subduction zone where a plate goes back in, it's melted and it returns into this convection. Okay, so again, as the spreading zones, the magma is just pulling these plates along and as they get pulled along, they um, engulf or uh, take over another plate. So what might happen if a continental boundary comes onto a seafloor spreading? Well, we actually have that happening in North, uh, Northern California, where we, the Juan de Fuga plate is slowly disappearing beneath, beneath the uh, North American plate, and eventually it will completely come on top. And what could happen what might happen is that as this moves on top of the spreading zone, the continent will eventually um, start ripping apart and this one part of it will be part of uh, the new plate and it would spread this way and the other part would um, spread the other way. All right, so that could possibly happen. Um, the spreading zones could change due to convection changes uh, below the earth. So uh, different things might happen. That concludes this video. The next thing you have to do is to draw a subduction zone and label the different parts. So I'll leave you with this picture and you can pause the video and draw it if you need to and label the parts that need to be labeled. 
If you have any further questions, please talk to your science teacher and have a nice day.